Lisa Bennett here, Workforce Millionaire. You are at the Loving Nonprofit Awareness Day, and I have the opportunity to interview Carmel Judd. Carmel Judd was an entrepreneur from an early age. Then one evening, she read a question in a book, how are you best suited, suited to serve humanity? And brought to tears by atrocities against women in Afghanistan in 2001. On May 11th, 2002, she launched Rising International, which is recently renamed Rising Worldwide. Rising is creating a global community that supports underrepresented individuals through economic equity, inclusiveness, and survivorship, survivor leadership. In the last 19 years, over 5,000 survivors of human trafficking, homelessness, extreme poverty, and gender-based violence have participated in the organization's social impact entrepreneur programs. Carmel, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. This is such a cool idea. I like this idea. I like it so much. Isn't I might that... do it again next year, only bigger. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I love it. And I help you with that too. <laughs> yeah. You. Just, yeah. I was trying to remember the other day when I first met you, and I know it was when you gave your speech, and I know I sat there and cried, and I think it was oh. Dining for Women, wasn't it? Was it Dining for Women you gave? Oh, my gosh, speech? it could have been. It could have been. Yeah, it's a while ago. I, you know, a while ago. I'm not sure. Um, and then also the other group you're in, right? The sisters group. I met you. Yeah, Sister Share. Sister Share. 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 Sister Share. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I then there was a. I think. Do you also know uh, Boyana? I forget. There was an. Oh my gosh! Boyana yes. Town. Yeah. Yes. I of course. Nice. I I didn't put. I forgot all about that. A little sale, and she can always yep. throw up supporters. She's really good at that. She's really a great supporter. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So we run. Oh my gosh! Yes. Ways. Yes. And, and I told you the day I met you that I would speak for you. This is a way of speaking for you today. You're doing it. That's great. Yeah, I got to take you up on it That's right. more often. Right. <laughs> That's great. So let's yeah. talk about how you got okay. here. If you'd like to give us more of your story of what started uh, rising. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you know, um, it's really evolved to um, over the years. And now we actually have three main programs. So when I talk about rising, um, I like to talk about them um, based on those programs or what we call paths. Um, so three paths. So we, we believe that um, those who have experienced economic hardship uh, locally and globally um, have the greatest potential to create our vision, which is a world where everyone prospers. And um, path one was um, how it all began. And that actually started internationally. So um, like my screen uh, behind me, these are Afghan refugees um, that are in Pakistan uh, right now. But path one actually started in Afghanistan. I was able to connect with a woman who had a secret school for girls in her basement. And she just believed that women should be given all the opportunities to move forward in life. And she basically risked her life to do, to do so, to inspire women right. um, to learn to read and write, right? And so our first program or path started in Afghanistan in a basement, um, wow. the same basement, same basement where uh, Jamila had her secret school. Uh, she gathered up her young women students and they started making beautiful, you know, things to sell to rising um, here in Santa Cruz. So we started by bringing, uh, creating these rising artisans um, from a basement in Afghanistan and bringing those um, beautiful items uh, to Santa Cruz County. Um, and then I like to call the, the, the rising rep path really like our second pathway. So if you, if you come to rising and you're looking for economic empowerment in Santa Cruz County, you might join us as a rising rep. And that means you learn to sell the amazing, beautiful things that their women are making all over the world, right? So you're really learning to run your own e-commerce business mm. um, right here from Santa Cruz. Um, I love this path um, because you really don't need to, um, 
you don't need to have run a business before or um, have uh, business skills or even a computer or any of these things will actually teach women how to um, support other women all over the world. Um, wow. So that's path two. And um, I think you know a little bit about path three. I just wanted to bring that up because this is relatively new for us. Maybe in the last six or seven years, we started uh, bringing in uh, rising, what we call rising experts. So these are women with lived experience with human trafficking. And they are, uh, they created one in particular created in Santa Cruz County, a program called Safe and Sound. Yes. And in, uh, right. And on that path, um, that's what we're leading in Santa Cruz County schools where uh, trafficking survivors are teaching youth what they wish they would have learned as a youth. So we can help keep our youth safe in Santa Cruz County. So, um, so this story really all started, you know, hundreds of miles away in Afghanistan yeah. and it's really come full circle right back to my hometown. I was actually born here, you know? Wow. Um, and you live, yeah. right? You live yeah. in Santa Cruz? I, I was born here and I live here and I, I'll never leave. Love it. Nice. Just love it. Yeah. So Carmel, yeah. tell me with, when the Taliban took over Afghanistan a couple months ago, when the U.S. exited. Yeah. Like, what was your reaction? What did the organization do? Did that change things immediately? Or did, like, did people go underground? Or uh, I know a lot of people yeah. tried to escape the country, but like, what was the effect for your organization? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for asking that. Yeah, that it was, of course, a shock to the heart because we all felt like we spent the last 20 years um, empowering women and partnering women with women there and working with women there and seeing so much change happen. And then there's, of course, the fear of it just all, all being rolled back, like everything going right. backwards again, right? Um, so we have been doing what we feel is safe to do. We don't want to put anyone at risk. So we've primarily focused on supporting the refugees that have been able to leave um, or needed to leave the, their home and are resettled right now in Pakistan. So we're primarily supporting a camp of women in Excellent. Pakistan and keeping their art alive. I mean, it's really incredible to see them um, still doing, using like traditional embroidery techniques that they have been passed down from generations, you know, um, keeping this culture alive, even though they're no longer in their homeland, you know, um, and then keeping them economically empowered uh, that they have this amazing skill that they can keep going no matter where they are. So that's our, um, that's our primary way right now um, that we're supporting women is through the uh, refugee refugee programs that so we're in Pakistan. So do you yeah. provide them with the materials yeah. that they're using to embroider and the fabric and stuff like that? We we actually work with a nonprofit group that does all of that. Oh. Um, we were able to connect with the famed author Haled Hosseini, who wrote Kite Runner. Yeah, I met him. Years, years ago, I met him. We actually have the same birthday. He's wow. born March 4th, 1965. <laughs> so oh. funny. Um, yeah, the odds of that, that my whole life would be changed over Afghanistan. And, and here's this amazing Afghan man uh, doing great things in the world. And so he introduced us to this nonprofit that uh, works with refugees and uh, it really vouched for them. And then we've been supporting them for years and we're just helping them now expand so um, more refugees can benefit from their services. So what we need to do is we just keep uh, placing more orders, you know, and then that means the rising reps in Santa Cruz County now have more and more ways they can support the refugees in Afghanistan right through their local rising businesses it's it's really helping each other rise. So the refugees know that when they create something beautiful, it's helping them rise, but it's also helping local women in Santa Cruz County as well. Hmm. Um, yeah, so it's really given, I would say Santa Cruz County residents and the customers an opportunity to do something about what they're hearing on the news. You know, they, you can participate 
in empowering someone in a camp by, you know, purchasing a bookmark or <laughs> something as right. simple as that, you right. know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's, are all the things that they are making, are there pictures of them online at Rising? Yes. Yeah. They're all um, at our risinginternational.org. We still have the risinginternational.org, even though we just changed our name to Rising Worldwide, but we're still using that right now as we're changing. But yes, um, you can go into the website and just search Afghanistan, and then you can see all the beautiful things they're making, all hand broidered. That part just blows me yeah. away when you look at the craftsmanship and realize that's all done by hand. Nice. Um, you know, recently, they actually sent a video of just just the just embroidering one little area and just how much work was involved. It's just. Um, really beautiful and i don't see any watch. of them wearing glasses are the how do their eyes hold up on all this like, yeah they I think glasses. they do well huh i know oh. yeah huh. yeah well what have you learned carmel so, you've been doing yeah. this a while oh my now. gosh and you started you know your heart's in the right yeah. place and it's this is yeah. this is hard sometimes so what if what have you it's learned hard. what have i learned oh my goodness well i learned that you always learn that we are more magnificent than we than you can ever imagine. I mean, the more you know about people and their capacity for for love, compassion, empathy, um, that I meet women every day that are living through such tragedy. You know, um, their hardships are so extreme, but they they still like care so much about the world and others and wanting to make an impact that it, it, it just carries you this, um, this sort of love for humanity. I don't know how to, to say it. It's um, even when we feel like, you know, there's maybe no more hope, you would think that they would feel that way, right? But I just watch this incredible spark of hope stay alive huh. um it's that's been that it's it's completely changed everything for me in my life yeah i know it's i wish i could i wish i had the words i'll have to work with you someday mm -hmm. on helping me with the words for this like what are the words for that you know that um do you think that their that, hope that, their, yeah, what is their that? constant hope springs from and their belief in god or from their belief that their community will survive? Or what do you think is the underlying thread that keeps them going? I really believe that we talk about this a lot at Rising, that we we want to create a different world. Hmm. Like we, we're committed, and the survivors tell me that they, they want to create a world that we all want to live in. Huh. You know, like the world we live in now is not that world. Um, it's, it's, it's just filled with too much injustice, hmm. you know, um, too many systems that are, are, are not in our favor, just too much barriers, too much working against us. But there's, there seems to be, I don't know, I, I, I can't really say if that's religious or where that's coming from, but hmm. there, there is this, um, this vision of a different world. Um, and it's a belief in it. There's a really strong belief that it can be it can be created differently. Interesting. And it, uh, can, be, it can be here yeah. now and not in some heavenly place, but yeah. in the here and now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, good. yeah. And thank you for participating yeah. in that vision with them. That's a great thing that you're aiding and abetting their vision. Yeah. Well, and it's my vision too, right? right? So it's, we're in it together. It's a, you know, we, we once we, we held a workshop recently where we talked about Rising's vision and that's actually where this, how we were able to articulate this. I had um, a group of us that are mostly trafficking survivors mm. uh, got together for you know two afternoons to talk about Rising's vision. And this is where we landed that what they saw, what we all saw as our own vision was the world that we wanna live in. How do we create that world? And that was what was keeping us all going mm. was that vision, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's so that, uh, that is the love that you see within your organization. That's the love. Yeah, there yeah. is a different way to have a world. There's a different way to live and be with each other. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. So I love that. I'll say, oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, Please go say. ahead. Don't let me interrupt you. Oh, I was just thinking about how, again, back to just like, no matter our circumstances, like to just watch the women in our program, um, when you, and you said it too, like how we can do this now, how we can create change now, they're not really waiting, right? They know that, that you can actually be a change maker, like in the moment now, you don't have to wait till you're retired. I know I hear that a lot. Like when I'm retired, I'll do this, right? right. But then you look at the women in our programming, some are, are in shelters. Um, we have some just living in their vans while they're looking for housing. You know, I mean, with, these are un, some unhoused local women that are not waiting till they have housing to be a change maker. Wow. Right? Are the rising reps? Right. They're the rising reps. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, these, they know that maybe they didn't have a computer or maybe they never used a computer when they came to rising or they'd never ran a business before. Or like I said, maybe they don't have housing or certain skills. That doesn't matter. They know they knew that they could still be a change maker. Wow. Um, yeah. And, and that, that's just amazing. Hmm. That is so amazing. Um, that's something I'm just in absolute awe of, awe of when I, when I see this in action. That's commitment. Um, yeah. That's commitment. 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 Is not a yeah. Feeling. Commitment is yeah. moving forward on, on your moving. vision. So those are committed women. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. What, what do you think is going to happen in 2022? What's your vision for 2022 and, and what kind of help could you use? Oh, thank you. Well, um, you know, one of the things we're looking at, I didn't talk about, um, you know, path three, I guess is um, maybe I mentioned it briefly where we have the survivors of trafficking that are teaching youth about human trafficking yeah. to understand, you know, what it is and what it isn't and how to spot a traffickers tactics and, um, we actually started to um, uh, teach parents now as well. And that's something I'm thinking about for next year. Just the, the parents um, have been really responding to our workshops um, that they really needed this information. You know, um, you know, I'll have to say a story. Once a youth that went through a workshop said to me, I know more than my parents and my teacher. Huh. Um, and that really opened our eyes that this is uh, something that adults, um, the adults in the room need to learn what is human trafficking and what does it look like. And so I, I, I see a lot more workshops in 2022. We actually have even expanded beyond Santa Cruz County and um, we're now in 15 states. Wow, um, good for you. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we had a real tipping point this year in uh, in rising and in expansion of our impact. So uh, that's only going to continue in 2000. I'm really excited. We're going to be able to bring this training um, more, you know, to more states across the nation. Uh, so that that's that's really exciting. And our rep program path two, we're really expanding that as well. So. Um, there's a lot of volunteering. I think I just got on the tail end of your last um, nonprofits, and I think I think I was hearing about volunteering, and and we and we uh, we have lots of opportunities for volunteers as well. Hmm. So that's um, that's a way um, people can get involved. Um, one of the areas that we're looking for when for the rising reps that run their own businesses selling goods um, from for the rising artisans around the world. Those local rising reps in Santa Cruz County could use mentors. Hmm. Uh, so that's a wonderful way to get involved and meet someone you're in your local community that's going to blow your mind how amazing she is. And maybe she just needs a, a little bit of coaching on, on um, some business skills or speaking. Lisa, you'd be a great <laughs> mentor. <laughs> Just someone just like you would be fantastic. Um, but we're always looking for mentors, um, even if it's just coming and teaching workshops, you know, for our um, our new uh, business owners. Hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, professional volunteers in um, marketing, in um, the area of HR, because Rising is growing so rapidly. 
And we're a uh, lot of our internal like technology and business tools. There's a lot of opportunity there for like business executives that are looking to give back, to get involved um, with our growth right now. Um, so that's, that's an opportunity. And of course, donations, uh, we're, we're currently raising money. We're, we're calling our rising for relief fund that is geared towards, uh, both local and global. So on the global side, we've been really extending and expanding our support. Like we were talking about of our, the Afghan refugee artisans, um, that really, really need us right now. So that's part of where donations are going. Hmm. But we also have a big goal to train a um, hundred more entrepreneurs, survivor entrepreneurs. And uh, so funds are, are supporting that. Uh, so that's a, that's a great place um, right now. Um, with COVID really having an impact, uh, especially on, on women. And, uh, this is, this is really important time that we felt like we needed to step it up and expand the number of entrepreneurs in the program. So mm -hmm. that's what we've been raising funds for. Yeah. It's a big vision yeah. and big. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you like, wake up some days and go, ah, I can't get my arms around this. This is so big. <laughs> or you just keep breathing and going one more step at a time. <laughs> one more step at a time. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, I don't, I, I, so interesting. I don't really ever think of it being too big. I oh, always good. think of bigger, bigger, bigger. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Good. yeah. 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 Maybe you're an empath. to do owner. more. Yeah, more and more. How to do more? How do I reach more people? How do we empower more women? You know, how to make more change happen? That's that's. I'm always looking at like how. What are systems you put in place? Right? Systems are so fascinating that to help you scale, so you can keep doing more. Like I'll tell you, like in our workshops that we're doing in the schools, um, just to give you an idea of the impact, there are. Um, we do a, like a pre and post survey, you know, to get okay. in a sense of the knowledge, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. So, um, so youth that have attended workshops increase their knowledge of human trafficking by an average of 89%. Wow. Um, they show a 90% increase in knowledge about services. And this one I love 256% increase in their knowledge of where would they call mm. if they thought someone was maybe being trafficked or, or maybe they needed advice or help, you know, 250%, 200, over 250% increase of that. There's even a place for them to turn to, Nice, you know? So imagine if we could do that and bring that knowledge and that impact all across the nation. Um, and, and even just more so right here in the local community too, right? Imagine we would create communities resilient to trafficking and you know trafficking is one of the crimes that we care the most about at rising that we're working very hard to end yeah and this is how we think we can do it with these survivor leaders showing us how hmm. that's so, a beautiful program thank you carmel for doing this yeah no thank you for inviting me this is great so if they wanted, if anyone wanted to volunteer at any of your three different programs, they would go on yes. to risinginternational.org. Is that what it is? Yes. Yep. Risinginternational.org. I think there's a get involved menu that you drop down that has volunteer and then you can sign up and then Sue at our organization is our volunteer coordinator and she reaches out and talks to people and interviews them and really make sure we find the right fit. So you're not just thrown in somewhere and just saying, oh my gosh, I didn't know that I, that was, that was going to do that. Right. We really, what I've learned over the years is find that right zone yes. for yourself in volunteering. Right. Yeah. Yes. And we do, we tend to do smaller projects that you sign up for. So, you know, you don't have to go long-term. You feel like there's something very doable. Plus we're all so incredibly overloaded and overwhelmed in our lives you know, so very doable, manageable projects, I think is key. You're um, a great enroller, so, Carmel. I think I should. Oh, help. yeah. <laughs> I think I should help. Yeah. I'm really good at speaking. I, I can speak to people. I can educate. I'm, an, I'm a good educator. 
I would love to talk to you about this. <laughs> okay. I would love to do, we could do a workshop for our reps on speaking. Wouldn't yeah. that be fantastic? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. We can would, do something. I love it. I can also teach cool. business fundamentals. I mean, I know all this stuff. Okay. Anyway. Okay. We'll, we'll talk. All right. We are going to talk. We are going to talk other than being recorded. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for your organization. It's, it's a beautiful, Oh, go on, go on her website and look at the stuff these ladies are making. It's beautiful, beautiful stuff and dolls. And I mean, there are a lot of different jewelry, jewelry home decor. We have, we have like about 300 fair trade items. And what we've won awards for is the fact that when you buy something for rising international, you're impacting a life locally in Santa Cruz County for the rising rep who sells it is gonna, her life will be changed, but you're also gonna making an impact globally, right? So yeah. with, for one purchase, you have a local global impact. Yes. And that's, uh, that's what, that's what, um, that's really the key to rising, right? That you are, everyone matters. Everyone is included at rising. We don't want anyone to be left out. So we've made this local global model work. Beautiful. Thank you. I, I think yeah. the beautiful things they make and your heart for this business and how I, I saw your heart the day I met you. You're, you're so, so dedicated to this and it is a hard subject and it's a subject that's not going to get better if a bunch of people with good hearts aren't going to dive in and actually help. So thank you for what you yeah. do yeah. and thank you for joining us today. Yeah. I appreciate it. Wonderful. Thank you. And I will yeah. talk to you later and you will get a, copy, okay. a link to the recording after the event. So thank you very much. All right. Thanks, Lisa. Okay. Take care. Bye.